DMVR Broncos podcast, Winner's Lounge. Woo! Let's Woo. go! Let's Fifth time go. this year. We love a Winner's Lounge. We surely do. And we are presented in this Winner's Lounge by our friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Get over to DraftKings Sportsbook where you can do things like bet on Jerry Judy to go over 900.5 yards oh, this season. Wow. Easy, and win. Easy money. Wow. Never a doubt. Never a doubt. Shout out to our friends over at DraftKings. Guys, got to admit, winning the last game of the season, better than losing it. <laughs> <laughs> it is, especially when that win comes from an explosive offense, yes. dare I say. Yes. Not just three 50-play drives, but putting up over 50-yard whoa, 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 whoa. plays. <laughs> plays. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Three 50-yard plays. plays. There, there we go. go. There I was we getting go. ahead of myself <laughs> because the more exciting one is 30 points in a game. They yes. saved their best for last. And they did not get swept mm -hmm. by the division, which is the most important thing to me. Uh, and even though the unserious organization that is the Chargers decided to play their starters for most of the game until they realized, yeah. oh, our starters are getting smacked by the Broncos right now. This might actually be bad for momentum. Let's take them out and pretend like we never cared. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. exactly what they did. Uh, some mind-blowing decisions there from Brandon Staley, and he just kept doubling down, tripling down on it. Some players were getting hurt, and he just kept going. And once Brandon Staley took Justin Herbert out of the game, the Denver Broncos were winning 31-20. to Yep, down double digits to the Denver yep. Broncos. And you were trying to gain or maintain momentum. Yeah. Good job. That was the dumbest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> earmuffs, Cook. earmuffs, earmuffs. Cook. You guys say it's it must be truth, before though. you say that, Henry. You're saying it after uh, does nothing. Well, okay. Well, Shit's allowed. Un, un earmuffs. Seriously, though, that was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. That is the dumbest thing I think a coach has ever done in an NFL <laughs> game. Nathaniel Hackett never did anything that dumb, which, I mean, that's, that's saying something. I just can't believe it. I mean, you mentioned it. Mike Williams carted off with a back injury. How do you let that happen? It's, what is it worth? Like, you're running screens to him. Why yeah. are you running screens to a breakable receiver who you want to have in the matchup that you're already set in stone for this weekend? You're going to Jacksonville regardless. Like, Justin <coughs> Herbert's out there is taking hit after hit after hit. What is there to gain? There is nothing. If there's anything to gain, it would have been if you wanted to put him in a game down 11 with eight and a half minutes left. That could actually be some valuable experience, but no. He's out for that part. He, he ran his nine drives. You're not giving the last two. Truly insane. Yeah. Truly insane. And the only way I could justify it is if they were going to be the one seed. And it was like, hey, we're not going to play next week. We don't want to sit yeah. for two whole, I guess, it, what would end up being three whole weeks before you set foot on the field. But, like, you have a game potentially. I don't know if they've come out with this, but they could play in six days. It's crazy. Again, like, you see it at the beginning. You're like, okay, there's Derwin James. He seems like he's going in. Okay, they're playing Herbert. Uh, I guess they'll give him a series. I guess they'll give him a And then it's like, oh, scored the touchdown. That's probably it. Go back out there. They do it again. Go score a second touchdown. You say, ah, oh, they played them two series, got their two touchdowns. Like, they're probably happy with what they're doing. No, they just keep going. And every time you keep thinking, like, oh, that's the last one. Oh, that's the last one. Oh, that's... Oh, they'll pull them at halftime. Of course they're going to pull them at halftime. Then what happens? They're back out there for the freaking third <laughs> quarter. What is this about? Guys, this isn't a charge. It's enough about the charges. Right. That, that, there, there was too much good about the Broncos oh. to be harping on the stupid Chargers decisions because when you think about this, was it two games ago? Maybe it was the last Broncos home game. I don't remember. But we sat here and we said, no one really deserves to be the DraftKings Sportsbook King of the Game. Yeah. Today, you could just keep going down the list of guys that all had really legitimate cases, and that is just... So encouraging because yep. just two weeks ago, well, we're talking about, okay, after this embarrassing loss, shouldn't everyone be fired and shouldn't Nathaniel Hackett be fired, which he was eventually. And now we're talking about, oh my gosh, 30 points. The offense looked like they had sparked so many good things to take away from this game. A game so good that we needed two kings of the game <laughs> for our friends over at DraftKings. Mm -hmm. Here it is. The Jerry's. Let's go. The Jerry's are the kings of the game. Jerry Judy, five catches, 154 <laughs> yards. Absolute beast mode. That didn't. I actually forgot to include his rushing stats. Yeah. Um, although those might have gotten destroyed by that failed reverse at the end of the game. Um, Still 39 yards. 
There you go. 39 so rushing yards. Almost 200 total yards. Yep. If those would have been uh, receiving yards, then he would have had 1,000 yep. yards yeah, on the year. Yes, but instead, he, he gets, what, I think 193 total yards, 11th most by a player in any NFL game this season. Wow. Unbelievable. Against, and against again, the Chargers starters for no reason. Yes, incredible. It's not a garbage game. And Jerry Rosberg, had to, I had to include him in here, getting his first ever win mm -hmm. as an NFL head coach, and maybe his last, probably most likely his last, uh, in his last attempt, he goes one for two. <laughs> oh, he God. said some things after the game that uh, <laughs> may lead otherwise. All right, well, let's talk, let's talk about it in a second. But uh, proud of him. I, I was hoping he got a Gatorade bath. I don't know if he did. He got a game ball. Is it is that that's not probably good better. enough for me? It probably lasts a little longer than a Gatorade bath. Gatorade bath, you have like an iconic photo. Remember, he wanted yeah. to be joyful, celebrating with his family after the game. I don't know well, if you can do no. that. Uh, freezing and sticky. Yeah. You know, no one wants to hug you. Don't you? Don't you want to hug people if you want joy? I mean, you could just take a shower. I will say, Gatorade I don't know if bath. He's doing that. <laughs> Gatorade bath is very much his era. Like, it I is. feel like you see an old coach like <laughs> or that. Or, like, carrying him on the shoulders off the field. That, I mean, he's yeah, not yeah, 90. Yeah. <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't the Notre Dame 1930s. I don't know. Whenever you talk about him, you just talk about how old he is. The, which he, it turns out, really hates. He does mm. not like that. No. He's brought it up multiple times this week. Yeah. Like about your your question about. implies that I'm old. He'll just say yeah, that. Yeah, like, Jerry, you've been in this game a long time, and oh. he, he stopped... Uh, uh, our guy Bruce last oh, week said that. How does that ball Take not come out? Take the ball. Oh, it is. It did. No, they called him down. Um, Sunday night He's football's hurt. on for those listening to the podcast. Yeah. Um, Some of us still have Packers Super Bowl bets. <laughs> 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 um, but, yeah, he, he doesn't like being called old. But uh, someone says, uh, how about an honorable mention to Justin Simmons? Absolutely. Yeah. He can be in there. An honorable mention to Russell Wilson. He can be in there. An honorable mention to Latavius Murray. He can be in there. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you can make cases – for five, six, maybe even seven guys for this. I'll mm -hmm. throw an extra one in there. Honorable mention, king of the game, to our guy Cody, who was yes. in the comment section before the game while we were waiting for Zach because he got stuck in some BS traffic. Mm -hmm. um, in there saying, like, let's get him to 100 likes before we even start. We didn't quite get it, but Whoa. it was a valiant effort. Didn't get it, but we got to 69. Mm, we did. Which nice. is better. A lot of people would say so. Yeah, me. Uh, including you. Yep. So shout out, Cody, and Jerry everyone uh, for all the love in the comments right now. Uh, appreciate you guys. We'll, we'll, we'll get, you know, a little more, um, what's the word? We'll wax poetic about you guys mm. and, and the support you've given us towards the end here. But appreciate you all. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Jerry, Judy, can we start there uh, in terms of big picture? Yes. Uh, what can you take away? The dude is a beast. Um, yep. in, in basketball, they talk about three level scores. That means they can score from the three point line. They can score from the mid range and they can score around the basket. Jerry to me is a three level receiver. He can mm -hmm. get you those quick screens and just turn them up field and, you know, and go and like that orbit motion and swing it out to him and get a bunch of yards. He can obviously cook you on the slants and the, you know, the 10 yard ends and that sort of thing, the dig routes. And then, of course, he showed it today. He can get you deep. Three-level wide receiver um, who has so, so much to give and I truly think has been criminally underutilized uh, in his first few seasons here in Denver. Um, but today was a great launch pad mm -hmm. for what Jerry Judy could be. We had that fifth-year option conversation. That's got to be a thing of the past now. Mm -hmm. That has to be a lock. Um, so excited for him to... Really, like, over the last, you could even say the last 14 games of the season. And he had a good one in the first three, but he had two yep. really bad ones after that. Ever since then, uh, a launch pad for Jerry Judy, and, and I'm super stoked for him. I'll say disappointing from today. Six targets for a guy that caught yeah. five of them. For 154 <laughs> yards, Justin Outen deserves a ton of credit for the game he called. Uh, so this isn't necessarily directed at him. It's certainly not directed at Jerry Judy. Uh, but and not necessarily Russ either. But when a guy is cooking like this, coming into this game, but then especially in this game, how do you only get him six targets? And then Cortland Sutton, I know he got a touchdown. It's his second touchdown in the last 25 games. Wow. So it's not like he was on a heater entering this game. Gets seven targets, only gets three catches, 33 yards. Again, not trying to take away from Cortland, but 
Jerry, how is this not 12 targets, 10 catches, a 220 yards? 50 yards. He had 30, over 30 <laughs> yards per catch here. So it was a fantastic game. Unlimited opportunities, which is just wild. And so I just think that what we've seen from Jerry and what we've talked about is his consistency has been great since week four. He, the bar he's had when he's played in a full game has been 50 yards per game. For that to be your low, that's a good low. And that, that's a true number one receiver low. And then your high is 30 yards per catch for 154 yards in a game. That is fantastic. And I just, it, the, the way he looks too is just as good as the 154 yards. The, yeah. the explosion, that's not just being a number one receiver on the Broncos. That's not just being a true number one receiver in the NFL. That is being that playmaker that we talk about and that the Broncos, I still think, need. But Jerry Judy showed me tonight that that potential is still there for him to be that guy. I love what you said about the eye test. Like, that deep ball he catches in the beginning of the second half, there's 10 yards of cushion before that play. And he mm -hmm. just eats it up yep. and just explodes past him. Um, he's, he's the truth, Henry. Yep. He is, I mean, the one thing you still need from him is contested catches, great catches. And that's the one thing that all the great receivers in the NFL have, you know, whether it's Devontae Adams or Justin Jefferson or DeAndre Hopkins. You know, every week they make one catch where you say, wow, how did he do that? But outside of that, Jerry Judy has everything. And if he figures out how to do that, you forget he's only, what, 23, 24 at this point, 24? There's still room for him to grow, and I think that's what's so exciting. But also, I mean, the fact that they were just jamming the ball to Cortland Sutton over and over and over again to start this game. Not sure what that was about. Cortland really does need to step up. You know, there was the, the busted coverage touchdown at the end. We'll give him his props, but... You, I'm excited to see Tim Patrick come back and, and see Jerry yeah. be that number one, Tim Patrick be that number two, and then who knows, maybe Cortland can be the underneath, you know, possession type guy who kind of rounds things out. And who knows, maybe KJ plays eight, nine games next year. That'd be fun. And uh, how about this? Jerry Judy put up 154 receiving yards when Russell Wilson had 13 passing yards with 31 Completions. seconds left oh, no, in the first right. half. 13 total passing yards with 31 seconds left in the first half. Yep. And Jerry still is able to finish the game, including a really big play in those final 31 seconds of the first half. He's still able to finish with 154 receiving yards. Yeah, he's um, got zero through the first four, through the first 29 yeah. minutes of the game, 29 and 30 seconds. Five minutes and, fi and 22 seconds later, he's got three catches for 110 yards. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just and two of those for 50 yards, I believe. One for 50 and one for 54. And I would love to go back. I won't actually do this. I wouldn't love to do this. I shouldn't say that. I would love if someone went back and went through all of the games where Jerry hasn't received a target more than 20 yards down the field. Mm -hmm. Like, to watch him just absolutely evaporate that 10-yard cushion today, run past the guy, and, you know, basket catch a beautiful ball from Russell Wilson just made me think, like, yeah, this should be in your script every week. Yeah. Yeah. If he has single coverage, you just say, okay, if he gets single, that's mm -hmm. the time we're taking a shot. But, again, a lot of the reason they were able to throw those were because of how this offense was built. They're pounding the ball, and it's working. That's the other big piece. I think it was the, the, the post-game show on KOA – Said it's the first time they've run for 200 yards since 2018. That's notable. But when you run like that, and then you commit to running the play action off of it, that's when you're going to be able to open things up downfield and get time to throw those deep balls. So it all does kind of play hand in hand. Well, and it's very telling what we've heard subtly from Jerry Rosberg over these past few weeks about we're going to do what's best uh, we're we're going to play to Russell's strengths the most. That's what I'm making sure this offensive coaching staff is doing. He pointed to that again after the game today. Mm -hmm. And Russ even pointed to that and yes. said the two things was running the ball and play action, having success off play action. It's like he did that for 10 years in Seattle or something, right? And sure then is. what did we hear Nathaniel Hackett come here and say? He, we heard him say uh, that we're, we're going to keep Russ in the pocket, have him be a true pocket passer. That's 
didn't find success there. He averaged 15 and a half points per game with Nathaniel Hackett calling the plays these last two weeks, really, when it's Justin Outen and Jerry Rosberg kind of ju guiding Justin Outen to do what's best for Russell Wilson. Not what's best for Russell Wilson's stats, but how Russell Wilson plays the best. The Broncos have averaged 27 and a half points in these past two games, including their only game with 30 points. Insane. Insane. I go back to what I said last week about how Broncos third string coach and third string play caller are their two best options somehow. <laughs> yep. And especially yeah. Justin Outen. Um, he, he's been really good these last two yep. weeks. And it's crazy. Even that they didn't hand him the keys as the first option mm -hmm. after Nathaniel Hackett. Like, and, and we had talked about it at the time. Like, it's kind of weird because he's just another Nathaniel Hackett. But it was clear mm -hmm. in these last two games that he was a little more creative uh, has a little better feel for the game, mm -hmm. put together better game plans. So mm -hmm. You wonder where this team would be with a couple of different things shaken out. If yep. the Broncos lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars <clears throat> in London, man, they could very likely fire Nathaniel Hackett then. Maybe Evero then does take over the job. Or if Jerry Rosberg steps in then, could the Broncos be uh, making a push for the playoffs? Would they be making a push to have a winning record? But then another thing is, way back at the start of when Nathaniel Hackett was hired. What if Nathaniel Hackett said, I'm just going to be the head coach and focus on game management. Mm. And then there's no kind of issues in Seattle. There's no counting down the play clock mm -hmm. from the crowd week two. And Justin Outen, the guy he hired to be the offensive coordinator to call the plays essentially, mm -hmm. is doing that. And it looks like this. It doesn't, we, we don't have to dive into it, but it is crazy. But when you look back and that's kind of what tonight provided, it provided like hope of being able to say, yep. well, maybe this team isn't as bad. And then it provides hope for a lot of people moving forward, being able to see these pieces work out. Yep. And the other side of laying Justin out and call the plays is that Clint Kubiak is back on the sideline with Russell. And, and you see them whenever the defense is on the field, both looking Talking, at the, yeah. the pictures and looking at the iPad or whatever they call theirs. And, that has to do something. Like having him right there to discuss everything and look through the coverages and see, talk through things. I, I, you give a lot of props to Justin Outen for the way he's calling plays, but I, I think that the multiplier is that you have somebody on the sideline who's with him or with Russell every single day talking him through what he's seeing. Absolutely. Uh, I want to talk more about Russell Wilson, but first I want to talk about our friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook, the presenting sponsor of this show. Get over to DraftKings Sportsbook and bet $5 on any NFL team, and you'll get $150 in free bets, win or lose. Going to want some of that betting money coming into the playoffs. Uh, it's a great way to enjoy games that your team is not involved in, which, of course, for those of you in the comments, our team will not be involved yeah. in the playoffs, so you're going to want to have a side. In fact, I forgot to bet on this Green Bay-Detroit game, so now I feel lost. Um, I'm just rooting for the Packers, I guess, to spite the Seahawks. And and my Super Bowl mm. bet. Oh, yes, and your Thank Super you. Bowl bet. Thank you. I appreciate Man, that. That's, I, I've even got money on the Packers to win this game, and I'm still pulling for the, the Lions. The Lions yeah, have not played Rodgers. No, you're right, you're right. But, I mean, just for the Packers to beat the – or to, for the Lions to beat the Packers and ruin their playoff chances. Yeah. I think I would say I'm an Aaron Rodgers realist, Hank. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just like uh, we have a, a Travis Kelsey realist over there. Yes, yes. Uh, Travis Kelsey one has a number one seed. The Packers are about to squeak into the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to argue that one of those guys is doing better than the other. Uh, yeah. One of them's definitely doing better <laughs> than <laughs> the <laughs> other. <laughs> it's not possible to compare. Um, anyways. <laughs> It's not possible to compare. Uh, what I was going to say is DraftKings Sportsbook is the GOAT. Get over there. Use the code DNVR when you sign up. Get in on all of their great promotions. Of course, age and eligibility, restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. Speaking of GOATs, the best beer out there is our friends over at Breckenridge Brewery. And they have the best beer for Broncos fans. It's called Broncos Country Ale. The can is so cool. Get yourself some. Even though you're not able to watch the Broncos in the playoffs, you can still support your team by grabbing yourself a Broncos Country Ale over at Breckenridge Brewery. Get yourself one and rep the Broncos for the rest of the playoffs. And also, if you want something else, you want a darker <laughs> beer for winter, check out our friends at Breck breckbrew.com to find out any beer. That's where they have the Breck Beer located, where you can find out where they have any beer available. We had a Seahawks fan in there saying Pete Carroll is looking at a catalog of draftable quarterbacks right now, thanks to the Broncos. I just looked. They're getting the fifth pick, yep. so not really. 
You're not going to get QB1 or QB2. The Broncos really hurt the Seahawks by winning today in yes. two ways. Not only did they drop from the third pick <clears throat> overall to the fifth pick overall that the Seahawks are going to get, mm. but they also let the Cardinals jump ahead of the Seahawks, and so yeah. now the Cardinals have the third overall pick. How about that? Uh, all city cities. Pick one, pick three, and pick five. Yikes. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Congrats to our CHGO Bears f friends for lucking into, I would say, the number one yeah. pick today because the Texans weren't good enough at tanking. Yep. Bobby Wild. Smith, bitter, going for two. I mean, what, he had the conversation this week about like trying to convince the owners that he deserves another season. They shouldn't have back-to-back -back one and dones. I, I'm the only explanation for what happened is they said, nope, not going to happen. He said, well, I'm going to go beat these guys then. Well, I mean, or he's I the ultimate, not, he's the ultimate bear. I, I mean, was going to say Chicago true. guy through and through True. here. Yep. He was doing one last favor for <laughs> yep. the only uh, organization that's ever truly loved him. It's true. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Uh, anyways, Russell Ooh. Wilson. Yes. I'm also pretty sure the Broncos came up two points short of not finishing finishing last in the NFL in scoring. I'll double check on that. Because the because the uh Texans scored so many points today. Mm. Mm. And uh don't look now, but the defense not going to finish as good as uh everyone thought it was all season. As Zach was saying for the second half of the season. Yep. Po the post Chubb numbers are The not, what? The post Chubb numbers. Whoa. Whoa! Well, who's yeah. aren't? Got to interpret that. Right. Interpret <laughs> that right. Yeah. Interpret. Broncos. <laughs> what are you saying? Broncos finish with 287 points. Colts and Texans have 289. Oh man! So close. And instead, this is the first time the Broncos have finished last in scoring in the NFL. Wait, Colts yeah, they and deserved Texans it. Texans are just right yep, above at them. At 289. Wow. The Broncos deserved it. They really oh, yeah. did. They owned it all but year, I mean, at least, right? Yeah. The Texans <laughs> also wire. kind of deserved it. <laughs> wire to wire. <laughs> yeah, like started with 16, ended with 31, though. Oh, wow. man. What a catch, Robert Tanyan. Okay. Russell. Future Bronco? Wilson. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Oh, my gosh. Speaking of tight Stop. ends. I speaking of tight ends <laughs> in the future, um, no one hates a player more than Henry hates Alberto. Bro, oh, my goodness. Wow. I just couldn't believe it all game. He's just like, that was Alberto's fault. I'm like, dude, Russ overthrew him. And he's like, he, he just should have been faster. It's Oh, my That's gosh. That's his thing. It's like he's supposed to be fast, but he's not fast. He's not. He See, doesn't do he, anything. I didn't know that. The, the so, Jerry Judy. I just thought we had to let the world know that's how Henry feels about Alberto. That first Jerry Judy end around or jet sweep or whatever we call it, <laughs> where he dodges the guy four yeah. yards in the backfield, Alberto just whiffed on that block. Yeah. And Zach's just like, well, he may look. He's, he handled his guy. It's like, no, no because he missed the first guy. He blocked the, the second guy. Well, he, got, he got a guy. And like, that he didn't knew Jerry was going to make a miss, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Russell uh, Wilson. <laughs> Albert. Best game of the season? Don't, don't think about the stats. Just the vibes. Um, I mean, full team vibes best. I think it was his best game of the season, and here's why. <sighs> he looked like Russell Wilson. On several different plays. The number one one is the number one Russ play of the year, which is obviously, you know, 30 seconds left in the half. Rolling to his left, flips the hips, and flicks that thing 58 yards down the field to Jerry Judy. There are very few quarterbacks who can make that throw. And to be honest, I wasn't sure if Russell Wilson was even still one of them. And he did it. Um, and, and the slow-mo replay of it is so sick because he's rolling towards the sidelines and he just gets everything behind it to get his hips into position for him to be able to flick that ball that far. That was his best throw of the season by a mile, in my opinion. Uh, and then even later in the game, the touchdown to court, uh, he was wide open, but it still was that Russell Wilson gets out of the pocket, he's rolling right, and he just flicks the you know flick of the wrist, great throw, touchdown. To me, it was the most visually like the Russell Wilson that we thought we were getting of all season. And so that, uh, for me, that's why it's number one. Well, and the reason is three 50-yard completions. And you just talked about one of them there. And that is the Russell Wilson that you talk about. And that when, when you think of, that's who you think of. Especially in mile high, the deep ball, that was supposed to be the game all season. And we just did not see it nearly enough. And we saw it to Jerry Judy. We saw it to Freddie Swain and we saw it to uh, uh, to Cortland Sutton as well, yep. right? Uh, no. no, to Jerry oh, Judy twice, twice. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Freddie Swain. So uh, you, you love to see the deep ball. 
but Ryan, I'm not going to go as far to say easily his best game of the season yeah. or, or even his best game just because for... I didn't say easily. For, okay, yeah, but, but for 29 minutes and 30 seconds, he was <coughs> two of nine for 13 passing yeah. yards. So it was definitely his best 30 minutes and 30 seconds uh, of any time. Mm -hmm. And it was because of those deep balls. And it was so nice to see. The crazy thing is, what did he finish? 13 of 25? Yep. I so mean, just barely 50% completion. 24. Oh, so 13 of 24, but again, still barely 50% completion, but it was the deep balls that elevated his game. And that's kind of, again, like what I thought the Russell Wilson experience was going to look like. I didn't mm -hmm. expect Peyton Manning getting into the right play every time at the line and dicing teams apart. It was, you know, move the ball, uh, some third down runs to, you know, keep the defense honest, and then a couple big deep balls a game that just changed the game. Mm -hmm. That's what this was. And also, how many games this season have we talked about how good Russ was in the first half and then how bad he was in the second half? At least two or three. I love that it was the other way around today. He turned it around. Mm -hmm. He knew he had 30 minutes left of football this season uh, and was able to reach into the bag and, and put out a winning performance. So for a few different reasons, maybe best or whatever, you can use different ones. It is my favorite Russell Wilson game of the season. And I mean, complimented, as Hank said, by a 200-yard rushing performance on the ground from the Broncos, over 100 from Latavius Murray, who, mm -hmm. I mean, Wait. he looked like he was 24 at a time. Legitimate yeah. question. Did the new field make the Broncos faster? Um, wow. Because Latavius, no. Murray, <laughs> Latavius Murray looked fast. It was a yeah. commitment to the run, which helped. I mean, only 24 <laughs> passing attempts, or 24 attempts from Russell Wilson showed just how, mu how much they were really committed to balance. Yeah. I swear there was something, something to it. I've never seen Latavius Murray even look like a 5 out of 10 speed. He looked like a 7 out of 10 yeah. speed. He, well, he it's really been did. building over the last two months. Like, it just ever since there was the one big run. Was that the Carolina game? Yeah. Yeah. There was that one where you first think, like, wait, is he kind of fast? And I swear, I agree. He's just been getting faster every single week. And this this wasn't a new best. Boy, I'll tell you what. The field certainly looked better than it did in the last home game. I don't know what it looked like on TV, but in person, didn't look like they got their $400,000 worth. Well... Yeah, there's a lot that goes into that, which is like normally this stuff takes a lot more time than just of course flipping it yeah. that quickly. <laughs> I was actually concerned because I remember yeah. there was a like a nightmarish scenario yeah. a couple of years ago where a team tried to replace their surface mid season and like mm -hmm. there was like, you know, the seams yeah. like coming up exactly. in the middle yeah. of the game and so I was worried that was gonna happen, but yeah. I thought it looked okay. There was definitely some slippage out there. There was a lot of slippage. I swear. Guys were looking faster. <laughs> Even Jerry looked a little faster. Yep. Do you have that with slippier, though? I feel like those two things don't go together. Less friction. <laughs> I think there was definitely not a lot of friction. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I loved what I saw. Um, is there anything you can take away from this for Russ on a grand scale? The deep ball. Yeah, you, you feel good about the deep ball. You feel yep. better about the deep ball there. Um, and just especially that second half that he was able to have. I, I do mm -hmm. think you, you feel good about that. You feel better about it, I should say. And you do see not just this game, but you look at the past couple of weeks, really the past two weeks, and you say, okay, there is something to work with there. And kind of yeah. like we talked about in this in this weekend's round or uh, Broncos pick em over at thednvr.com, is Russ fixable? We all said Russ is fixable. Mm -hmm. It's just to what extent. Uh, and tonight proved that the deep ball can be there if, if the coach plays it right. Yep. And the biggest thing to me for this offseason is is just, just how fast can he get? Because you, you mentioned before, like, there's a couple plays where he rolls out and gets away from guys. There were just as many, I yeah. thought, where he didn't. And well, he just this, got buried. He does this weird thing that I don't remember from his past, and maybe it was there. But he, like, ducks down in the pocket, and he's kind of, like, yep. looking for his out. And then he doesn't figure it out, and it's too late, and he gets sacked. Yep. I don't remember that from before. Maybe he can get rid of that habit. It's almost like he's trying to hang in there a little bit too long. And then he's like, oh, shit, can I get out of here? And it's too late. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the thing, though, is if he can just get a little bit more burst. I know he's what he's going to be 35 next season, and there's only so much you can do for speed at that point. Lose weight. Exactly. But I do think that there's those 10 pounds that he can cut off. And if he does that, you know, does that does that bring him back to where he was in his younger days? Probably not. But there were so many where he, he looked like he was so close to getting away. And if you just get a couple more of those, then, then maybe that's the difference. 
Yeah, and, and it's he's never going to be the Russell Wilson where he's averaging 500 rushing yards a game, but mm -hmm. ju just a little faster. But also something that we did not see until... Wait, what did you just say? He won't ever average 500 yards a game. <laughs> what? Which I totally agree with. 500 yards a season <laughs> is what I meant, which he did do <laughs> yeah. for the first 10 years of his career. Sorry, getting game of season confused there. Um, but I can also guarantee he's not going to average 500 yards a game, too. Um, but uh, too. What, one thing that no we... No 50 play drives it's, it's, either. No 50 that's like play in drives. The, in the press box when you said, oh, they should go for this one, and it was third down. <laughs> Yeah, well, I also thought that when it was second down, too. So I was just throwing, <laughs> yeah, I was throwing off there. That's another they need one. Totally all the downs agree. they can get, Zach. <laughs> Definitely go for that third down. Um, but but <laughs> one of the things we also saw with Russ that we did not see until these past two weeks uh, is we did not see designed running plays for Russell Wilson. We saw that last week, of course, with the touchdown, and we also saw it this week with uh, that design quarterback draw. We signed the design quarterback mm -hmm. sneaks. We finally see them actually using Russell Wilson to run the ball, and after mm -hmm. you guys giving me so much shit, I gotta give myself <laughs> credit for keeping the composure as you two totally lost it as the Lions do a little trick play that's now called back for a touchdown. It should have been a pick, and it went right Wait, through the guy's... What? Uh, called back for a what? Called back from a touchdown. Oh, from uh, a touchdown. Yes. I said called back for a touchdown. No. <laughs> no. Might have to go to the tape. No. To, the tape. No. to the tape. <laughs> uh, it was such a perfect time to call a flea flicker, like second and inches. Uh, big old hold, though. And what a cheater. He, it was a oh, pick. It should no. have been a pick. It went right through the guy's yeah, hands and then into the Lions receiver. You know what I think? The flea flicker is now overused. It was underused for a long time, but now you're getting one almost every other game. But that's does the, it work? That's the second flea flicker I've seen all season. About half the time. Season. Really? Do you see flea flickers left and right? Everywhere, the, flea flicker, flea flicker, flea flicker. Everywhere you go, another flea flicker. Yeah. I've seen two. I'm seeing lots of flea flickers. I, was, I, I would guess that flea flicker success percentages have dropped this season. Mm. The I'm thing is, confident. just like a play action pass, you have to be uh, effectively running mm. the ball for it to work in the first place. True. It's All it is is a... A super play action. There was the goal a, is to get the safeties to come right, down. You right. know who screwed up the Philly special recently? It's like last week. There was a bad. It was a one. big game. It was. Was it the national championship or the CFP? It might have been the college football playoff. I think it was in call. College, college. There was football. just a dumb Philly special where it's like yeah, that. It's it also work. overused now. No, it was that game that went into like double overtime. A team tried to run it. I don't. I know what you're huh. talking about. Yeah. Though, yeah. Uh. Anyways. I think you, you can pull a few things from this game from Russ and really from the last two weeks, which is the last two weeks, the Broncos had a competent offense. Yep. What did, what would, so would they average 27 points a game in the last two? 27 and a half. Where would that rank in the NFL this year? Uh, well, the Chiefs are top in the NFL at 29 and a half. So it'd be up there. Top 10 for sure. Maybe top. Five. Oh yeah. It'd probably be top three. So obviously that's Tied not how third. sample sizes work or anything like right, that. Right. But it showed me that Russ over the last two weeks is capable of leading an offense that against, can score a, a decent amount of points. Against two playoff teams, yes. don't yes. forget. Yes. It was Michigan. It was mm. Michigan. Okay. <laughs> That's what like all the comments are saying. Yeah. So many so many games. Um, there are a lot of football games. So, anyways. A lot of leaf flickers. I think you can, you can pull away from this saying, okay, he is not done. I think it's fair to say now he's not done. He's not <laughs> completely cooked. It's not... It's probably a lot less likely that the Broncos do the outlandish thing that we right. talked about weeks ago, which was, you know, cut Russ, cut so-and-so, so-and-so, yep. and, so and uh, you know, all this, and tank for next season. I think what I came away from the last two weeks saying is competent coaching and good play calling can have Russ be more than passable as a quarterback. And if you're going to get Sean Payton, you're definitely going to have that. If you're going to get... Jim Harbaugh, I think you have a very good chance at having that. You're definitely going to have competent coaching with either one, uh, and you know you feel good about what the staff would look like with either guy. Don't overlook what Jim Harbaugh has done at the quarterback position, though, specifically sure. his two years in the NFL. I mean, took Colin Kaepernick yep. and made him a borderline Pro Bowl quarterback, took him to the Super Bowl. Is he going to call plays, though? Um, I'm not sure. I I'm Probably not sure, not. But, but he'll be That's, working yeah. with, with the quarterback in the offense. And then he took Alex Smith, who was very disappointing, and turned him into um, a borderline Pro Bowl quarterback as well. Yep. Yeah, I just meant I know for a fact you'll have a competent coach and play caller with Peyton. You'll definitely have a competent coach with Harbaugh when you assume a good play caller to go alongside him. Yeah. You just don't know that one for sure. Yeah. No, I think 
for the first time in a very long time, I don't think the best thing for the Broncos to do is cut Russell and go to all the extremes and panic and, and just tank for a season for Caleb Williams. Like, it does seem like Russ isn't done. They might not be good, and he might not be good, but he can at least do enough things that, you know, maybe, maybe you do need to run for 200 yards for enough downfield options to open up for him to be as successful as he was. But there is at least a path. And I think that if you build the running game and run the play action off of it, which is what you should always be doing with Russell Wilson, there's no reason they can't at least be a playoff team. I can't, I can't believe I have to say this to you, Henry, of all people, but if they could still successfully tank for Caleb Williams, that's the best uh, thing to do for the long-term so? future. But as Ryan said, that's no longer going to be an option that the Broncos True. take. And uh, something we're going to dive into, we have plenty of weeks and days to do this and months. Um, it's clear the Broncos aren't interested in a long-term rebuild with the way they're approaching this coaching search either. <clears throat> I think that's a great point. And I'm excited to talk this week about where they go in this coaching search and, you know, who the favorite is and who our favorite is and do you trade the pick and this, that, and the other thing. But uh, I think you feel a lot better about just the potential of what Russ can be with a competent running game, a competent coaching staff, and a competent play caller back there, which is something you should have. And you know what? I just want to thank the Broncos for getting a win tonight, making it an exciting game because fans are excited after this game. They, this is something that they thought they were going to get way more than five of this season, five wins. Uh, and also, there's so much to talk about on this coaching search. We could have easily, if the Broncos had lost 13 to 12 to the Chargers, we could have easily just not talked about this game and went straight to the coaching search. But like I said, we have days, weeks, months to talk about that. Uh, and we're be talking about that tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday and there's no better place than on this podcast make sure you tune in daily for those of you that are new with us we do this five days a week throughout the entire year so we're not going anywhere we're going to be right back tomorrow and then of course we also have a website thednvr.com so go there check out we're, we've got a hot board Hank's got all the candidates yep. you could ever think of we're going to have a tracker up very soon to let you know exactly what's going on in this coaching search mm -hmm. so just because the season's over hardly means that we're done. Yep. So also have that mock off season up on Tuesday, which is a lot of fun. I'm almost done with it. There's a couple changes, but like the coaching staff, who you bring back, who you don't, the free agents you sign, the draft, who you cut before the season. Whole thing is going to be, it's, it got too long probably, but that's coming out Tuesday. Oh. But also until Tuesday, there's something that you all should do. And that is to call... The phone number 303 602 4912 and get some health insurance from Denver Health Medical. There's one more week left in the open enrollment period. And now, in my opinion, is the most dangerous time of year. There's ice everywhere, there's bad drivers everywhere. They're there all year. It's cold. What happens if you get stuck outside? That would suck. Frostbite was the answer. Frostbite's yeah. what happens. But yeah, so you have to pay attention to all that stuff. It's a very dangerous time of year out there. So make sure you go over to Denver Health Medical. And again, open enrollment for individual health plans runs through January 15th. They are the most affordable, most cost-effective plans on the market. Um, all Elevate Exchange plans include adult dental and vision at no additional cost. So many cool perks. A local company, obviously. So... Go to denverhealthmedicalplan.org or call 303-602-4912 today. You got us? Oh, I got <laughs> us. Also, go check out our friends over at FOCO. Did not have uh, it. They've got all sorts of awesome different Broncos things. Uh, and I say things because there's really no other way to encapsulate everything they have. True. Uh, you can get Broncos Crocs. Mm -hmm. You can get a Broncos sun hat, which, yeah. by the way, I'm hitting the beach this week. Wow. Gonna, gonna have to bring that Bronco sun hat with <laughs> wow. me. Wow. Hope I don't have lice. I hope you don't have lice either, just <laughs> wow. for <Yeah>. several reasons. <laughs> um, you can get a Bronco's lamp. You can get a Bronco's Lego set. You can get just about anything Bronco's themed over with our friends at FOCO. Uh, and if you use the code TNVR, you can also get 10% off. So check it out. It's a fun place to, to just scroll around and be like, what could I add? You know, if you have a man cave or a woman cave or a, what are they a she shed <laughs> wow is uh something i've heard what um, do they do in there <clears throat> watch sports oh 
Okay. So you need to add some Broncos, neon signs, whatever. Uh, check out our friends over at FOCO. Use the code DNVR for 10% off. There we go. Shall we dive into some questions? Yes, we got some super chats. Let's go. First of all, wait, 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 wait. Before we get into the questions, can I just give a shout out to... I'll let you guys be the judge if I can call him my guy or not, but Jaquan McMillan. Who, wow, yes. <clears throat> who I predicted all the way back in like our first training camp show to be my dark horse to make the team as a UDFA. <laughs> wow. Does not make the team as a UDFA. Hangs around all year and gets up today and balls out. Starts. Should have had a pick six. Was literally robbed of a pick six. Starts. Yes. Yeah, and it was Lamar Jackson who was getting the De Damari Mathis reps after the concussion. Everybody in the press box was shocked. Jaquan McMillan, who? But he was incredible. He yeah. was really, really good. There were a couple more plays that he could have made, but they were only on like really great throws. Yes. And the energy he brought too. Like there was the chase down <coughs> tackle from behind on the jet sweep. Mm -hmm. The other side of the play brings him down. He's like fired up. It was He's like flexing. a hard tackle too. Yeah. There was like a nice little pass break up there when Josie popped the running back just outside the goal line. Jaquan or Jaquan or whatever running in there, and he's like getting in the running back's face, even though he had nothing to do with it. I love the energy. I. I mean, he he's going to be around next fall. I'm not sure if he makes the team, but after today, and there's a few guys like that where you're saying like he, he might he might actually be a Bronco going forward. Well, and you just love the series he had. It, he yes. he completely ruined a Justin Herbert led series where he had a TFL in the backfield across the other side uh, of of where he was yeah. lined up, and then you also have him in just smothering coverage on Mike Williams to force an incompletion on third down and force yep. the punt. So there was no objections. He's my guy. Nice. Wow. <laughs> uh, I'll take. Wait. Can I take Tyler Beatty? Beatty or Batty? We don't really know. I want to call him Batty just because it seems cooler. Because it's like Evan Batty. Yeah. Because neither it's a name of we've you guys before. get these guys anymore. Ryan, you didn't correct him when he said your guy's name wrong. He, he figured. Even know, he figured he, it out on his he own. He doesn't even know how to say his own guy's name. Well, I'm, so the thing is, I'm the, just sticking with my guy Jerry Judy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Congrats on Jerry Judy. But with with Beatty, which is how the Missouri pronunciation guide said but batty how the broncos said when they introduced him oh, although they didn't include him on their pronunciation guide but we'll move on a from lot this. of confusion Beatty, first touch in his career tyler let's just call him tyler tyler first touch of his career is that catch with the toe tap up the sideline all, all all the way to the end zone scores the touchdown he was a legit draft <laughs> prospect this spring like there were a lot of people who thought he was going to be really good i think he was uh, he led the SEC in yards, did it really efficiently. I think it was like number two in the NCAA in rushing behind some guy from one of the directional Michigan schools. Well, he was a fifth round pick. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. There you go. But he, he is on the practice squad for the Ravens all season. Broncos yeah. signed him a couple weeks ago. And you see why. Like, he has that burst. He's another one who, especially with Javante Williams sitting out those first four or five weeks probably of the season – he could get that initial roster spot next year, and and who knows what happens from there. It's Yeah, it was exciting. So stoked for my guy, Jaquan McMillan, except for the fact that he was literally robbed of a pick six. And I True. was going to be pissed if they just gave him the pick because it should have been a pick six. And then they were like, oh, we'll just double down and take away the pick as well, which was absolutely a pick. So Was it? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, to me, it's a 50-50 call. They call what they saw on the field. If it, exactly. the ref sees it and says, like, ah, oh, you know it. To me, to the naked eye, it looks like an incompletion. That's a good tiebreaker for me. I'll let Hank take the fall on this one. You're supposed line. to just let it play. That's like the way they're coached. It shouldn't be, though. It should. I don't think. Automatic review. Then no one has to waste a challenge. But but the thing is, th there's so many calls that just stand, which means whatever they call in the field is what they go with. Yeah. And so I like having the naked eye as a tiebreaker. If, the, if you want to say, like, let him run to the end zone and then say that ball hit the ground, I could get behind that. That works too. Just let's just yeah. Anyways, congratulations okay. on your pick six, <laughs> Jaquan. Great game for you. Um, it's a pick six in my book. Me uh, too. Um, no, it's not in your book. I'll give it to him. No, you took <laughs> it away. You I remember. Took it away. I said it's a fifty-fifty call. It's a it's a bright you spot. Just, you just though. got a two thumbs down. Good job, Hank. Wow. Ah. Hey, it wasn't me this time. It wasn't you this uh, time. You'll get us tomorrow. Sometimes it's better to... Uh, no, when games are done, I'm good. What's, what's the old <laughs> phrase? Sometimes it's better to stay silent and have everyone think you're an idiot 
Then open your mouth and remove all doubt. No, it's I, think they don't like me or remove all doubt. I'm you, not wrong. You got in hot. You got in deep trouble on what was it Wednesday when we were talking about when you were talking about teachers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez. I, let's not. Uh, gym, let's not bring gym teachers. Stuff. Gym teachers have great jobs. That's all I'm saying. If I it's, were to take another job, uh, it's I'm, not what you you're said. You're muted. He's muted. Let's yeah. just yeah. move on. No, 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 I'll mute no. Zach too. It's not, all right, let's too. get to the super chat. <laughs> Kyle, who says, uh, how big of an indictment on Hackett have the last two weeks been? It feels like all the issues this season are at his feet. Seems all three phases improved. Yeah, I mean, not, uh, not special teams today. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> Which is the Jerry Rosberg <laughs> oh, section Aaron of Rogers the game. Oh, Aaron Rodgers free play. That's going to be a touchdown. Yeah, and uh, the also, oh. I do disagree, but this isn't because of Hackett. The defense has has not improved simply over these past <coughs> month. The defense has actually got worse. Um, and credit to Justin Simmons, though, coming up with two huge plays today, two yep. forced fumbles, with, which were absolutely huge. But when it comes to the offense, yes, they've drastically improved. The play calling has been better. The play design has been better. Um, and r whatever it is, I don't know, because Russell Wilson, Nathaniel Hackett was drawing guys open in the first half of the season pretty often and Russ was missing him maybe he was just doing too much for Russell Wilson or Russ is just more comfortable now because that's just not happening as much yep and so much of it's just that play action instead of seeing him in the pocket and having him make reads yeah it's a lot easier to roll out and look at what's in front of you but with the defense the the one thing I would say is that I am willing to give up another five points a game if you're also pulling another two turnovers a game and that's okay, what but, they've done but to be fair no they've been giving up over 10 points per game more these past okay. couple of weeks. Yeah, the turnovers have been great. By the way, shout out to Justin Simmons. Kind of got off to a slow start this season and really, Because of really, an injury. Right, got her right. week one then <clears throat> missed and the then, next four games. Right, but even when he came back, wasn't himself. Yeah. Uh, especially from a tackling perspective. Yep. I think he got better in that regard and then ended up, they said on the broadcast, leading the NFL in interceptions, tied for the lead. He is. He's tied for the lead in interceptions. He has three forced fumbles and a fumble recovery, so he has been responsible for 10 uh, turnovers this year. Uh, that Crazy. might be more than they had in the entire first year of the Vic Fangio era. Oh, yeah. man. And honestly, that's the place that Justin kind of needed to take that leap in his game to be a true playmaker, and that's what he's, that's what he's done this year. All right, next one, uh, also from Kyle Garcia says, which current coach is most likely to be retained? I'll give my take. Jerry Rosberg. Well, then he's a head coach. Nope. Then we'll be talking about that later <laughs> this week because yeah. uh, uh, I don't think he, he doesn't want to be a special teams no. coordinator. He's been there, done that. What if he just stays on as game cock uh, consultant? He's got, he's got bigger things to do he in does. his life. Like what? Uh, like, well, he would love to tell you. I don't think you want to dive into it now. <laughs> he we, we, would love we, to we, tell we you. We actually should spend time on this because yes. he's said two very conflicting things in the past three days about mm -hmm. his future with the team. The f I will say, even before this game, he was also on with Dave Logan and said what he told us before, which is like, I've got the other ventures I'm into. I've had my fun. I've really enjoyed this. But, you know, is he not been. telling us what his other ventures are? No, no we know he is. A, you want to know about him? It's yeah. A, it's a, uh, a startup healthcare venture that he's been in. And I, I mean, we could go into it. It's about, what is it about? It's, it's um, not cryogenics. No, it's not cryogenics. It's um, similar. Doesn't seem like this is I a think, good thing I to think get it's into. one of those things where like, you put your body in a big machine for a bit oh. and you wind up feeling better after. It's geared toward like life players. electric. <laughs> uh, no, because it's more real, I guess. But. The th it, this it's is to help players after they retire. Yeah. He's very passionate about it. But I do think he opened the door he did. to returning with the Broncos after the game today. But only as a head coach. That's how I took it. Okay, fair enough. I'll take, uh, I'll take Christian Parker for my pick. Oh, good pick. DB's coach. Yeah. I mean, you look at... I, I, he might wind up being a defensive coordinator somewhere. There's a chance of that. There's a chance that Jiro Evero's gone, and so because of that, he follows. But having him in the building... And you look at what Damari Mathis did this season. You look at what Jaquan McD McMillan did today. Um, Pat Sertan, incredible. Mostly props to Pat Sertan, but he is in that room. k the way they've used him. Isang Bassi has been very functional when he's been on the field. I, I think that that is a really bright coach who, you know, the, the new staff probably wants to retain, although he will have offers. Zach? 
Man, I, that's that's probably a, a, a good one. Not sure about Everett. I'll go Mike Mallory, assistant special oh. teams coach. <laughs> His son is a tight end in the draft, by the way. Late yeah. round pick. I won't be surprised if, if he comes. If is there Mike another Mallory in the NFL? Like is, was his brother a coach or something? I believe so, a Head yes. coach? Yeah. Bill Mallory? Does that sound familiar? I don't no, I know. think that's a famous buff. Um, uh, anyways. Are you thinking of Bill? Uh... No. Belichick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know him. All right. Next one from Andre, who says... Can you guys do a five-hour show? Yes. Not, le- not ready to let this horrible season go. Call it an unhealthy relationship. Wow. Oh, that is su- that is unhealthy. Surprising. <laughs> yes. Uh, that was about the hours. only sentiment I had before the game. Well, we'll be doing over five hours the rest of this week, so don't worry about that. Yes. Um, I'm quite. I, I'm quite ready for this season to be over. I'm yeah. glad it ended on a high note, though. Yeah, yeah it And I'm did. glad there's no more opportunities for it to go to a low note. Broncos are 500 in 2023. Let's go. Yeah, how about that? Wow. That's, a, that's a playoff team in the NFC. And the only it loss is. is against to the uh, uh, Chiefs. So you'll take it. He will take that. Oh. 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 I think he's out of bounds. I think he's out of bounds. I think he got it before no, he's out of bounds. Gave it to him. No, I think what happened is he got it, but then lost it, then went out of bounds, then got it again. I hope because uh-huh. I have Packers first half money line, so Ooh. I really need that to be in bounds. What was the, what was the juice? Uh, well, I did halftime, full time, minus 130. Oh, okay, so you got to get the first, yeah. first leg here. Yep, yep, yep. We're talking I about... I uh, want, like, my heart is telling me to root for the Lions. No. Oh, he had... Uh, They've had their I think fun. He had it. But... I just have to root for the Packers. Rodgers in the playoffs is just way more fun than the Seahawks. Well, Andre. Especially here in Denver. Just want to say, True. appreciate you for the fact that you want this season to keep going, even yeah, if it's just like on the that. podcast. I like that. <clears throat> All right. But as I said, we're still going to be rolling on the pod for a long time. Forever, actually. Let's go. Forever. Let's hope. Uh, Cody says we just got 250 likes. Let's can we get go, to 200 Cody. before the season? Thank uh, you, the, Cody. The show ends, or so, technically the season ends. So if you guys can hit us with a thumbs up if you're tuning in on YouTube, we would really appreciate it. And of course, everyone tuning in on podcast side, hit us with a five star review. Again, we really appreciate yeah. all the support. Got to drown out the lame Seahawks fans who got butt hurt when I said we we're I was rooting for the Packers to spite the Seahawks <laughs> and hit us with four thumbs down. Wow, Ryan, you too. Just uh, giving us the thumbs down today. Speaking of doing off-season shows, we've got Alaska here. He says, don't forget to mention the off-season pods. Mm. I was so sad after my first season of DNVR, back then BSN, because it meant I was losing my favorite pod. Then I found out y'all continue in the off-season, and several, several people are of the belief that the off-season pods are where the real the real nectar is. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And there's a lot of nectar in these next couple weeks, definitely. Really, I mean, mm-hmm. this this off season is not really an off season because now we've just jumped right into a coaching search, which is already underway. Yes. Is it once again the most important off season in Broncos no. history? This one is not. No. You don't think so? They're just searching for a coach this year. I mean, but they, it's Jim Harbaugh. They, or yeah. Sean Payton. No, last year it really was because they had okay. to get owner, head coach, and, and quarterback. quarterback. Now they might have gone 0 for 3, maybe 1 for 3 at this point. But with they're owner. stuck with the quarterback, and they're stuck with the owner now. And not in a bad way with the owner, but I mean, like, that's not changing, so there's only one that can change. Yes. Um... So right. we're going to be realistic with you guys. We're not going to let Henry uh, try no. to, you know, just I spin think it's it a up. big offseason. I didn't Decision say it wasn't big. 2023. Yeah. I just say the biggest offseason in Broncos wow. history. Is the ownership good? Big question. Maybe yes. even bigger than who are Won't the owners. Won't be answered. Um, uh, I'll answer. The last owner- day of the offseason, I'll submit my answer. <laughs> the ownership has money, which gives them a huge leg up. Yes, they spent $400,000 on a new playing service. Everyone this, wants us this, to know. This uh, I've barely even been watching the Does Packers he game it while in their field. Touching Looks out better. of bounds? Oh no, oh no. Get out of bounds, baby. Wait, he No, I don't think so. Nope. Unless they just oh, did a bad it. Oh. Bad job with the camera work. Which He's out is, for sure. He's out for sure. No, huh. he, Green had Bay it. Ball. he had Green his Green Bay ball. Come <clears> on. <throat> Uh, but, yeah, we will be rolling all throughout the off season. We have Every a lot day. of fun with it. Um, hoping to bring in some more guests and stuff that we've done in the past. Uh, so 
stick with us. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Ian B chimes in and says, boys, turbulent season, but we stuck this out as a fan base. Thanks for the show, streams, and laughs. Shout out to the players showing up and showing out today. Legitimately excited for next year. Love that. Yeah, I love the sentiment. And Ian, um, you've been riding with us all season. We appreciate that a lot. Yeah, it really was an impressive season from Broncos fans. Like, obviously, so frustrating, so disappointing, so disgusting in a lot of ways. And, man, for the most part, it felt like the engagement was still there. Broncos fans are a different breed, man. They don't really go away. 13,200. <laughs> there is that. Yeah. I don't know if I can agree. I mean, I'm not really thinking about that, but I it should have been more. It should have been six it should have been 70,000 no shows. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> well, it was almost that <laughs> last game in Nathaniel Hackett's final game as at home game as a Broncos coach. Yeah. I'll say the shout people out to everyone who went. The people here don't go away. That yes, 100%. That, that's kind of what I meant. The hundred percent Um, I just Obviously, I, I have a lot of love for the people who went to the games because I I didn't want to go. It's totally fair. What uh, were tickets? Do do we get a final ticket ticket price didn't today? Check. I did not. I did not check it. Uh, I I assume very cheap. I would I also I assume would think that. so too. But it was yeah. also really nice out. It was legitimately it was. hot at the tailgate. I had to shed my jacket. Yeah, it was warm. Yeah. All right. Next. From Kyle, Vic, uh, Kyle Garcia says, have some victory wow. drinks on me, gents. It's been an insane season. Thank you so much, man. That's Kyle. a triple super chat. Thank you, oh, Kyle. It is. Thank you. We're going Thank top you. shelf. Yes, we are. <laughs> oh, man. And I'm glad that Broncos got the win for Broncos country. You can see just how much people were dying for a win. Yeah. I mean, it, it was it was meaningful. Every win this season ended up being meaningful. I mean, the London win was like thank god at that moment like it, it saved that week the last time they won i don't even remember what it was but i remember feeling afterwards like man we needed this arizona ah uh, yes yep. arizona game and then this one you know had its own meaning it hopefully next year it's not not like that i am not as down on the chargers after what they did today for the long term in terms of next week their game against the jags but if they lose to the jags I think the Broncos can take uh, a lot of credit for that, for what happened today. For hurting their players. Well, hurting their players and just totally messing down. with their psyche. Yeah, I think uh -huh. that's even more important than Mike Williams, um, his his injury. It, it came out on Twitter, but I, I don't remember what it was. It says that x-rays were negative on okay. his back. Oh, well, good. 80 I, I'm to happy one. that his yeah. back isn't broken. Yeah, x-rays would have been bad if they were. But yeah. My 80-1 to 1 Jaguars Super Bowl bet looking a little bit better today. Man, Jags did not look good yesterday. Ah, that's a and tough I had, defense, though. I had money though. on them, so I really wanted them to win. But that's like, a tough defense. Oh, I was just, I was not, and, and I would like to see the Jags go far because that I think that's one team in the AFC you would like feel good about rooting for. Maybe the Bills, too. Yeah, I mean, I've already lost all my bets against the Jags, so yeah. I can hop on the <laughs> train now. <laughs> we can all eat pizza and uh, wow. yes. watch the Jags together. They are really fun. <laughs> All right, last super chat here from Edward, uh, who says, My first Broncos home game, and we got the dub. The energy in the stadium is awesome. I loved it. Seeing the game today, it was more uh, Hackett in the offensive line than Wilson. He's not washed. DB4L. Wow. Um, Let's go. Stoked for you, dude. That's so awesome. Yep. You got to go to your first game, got to enjoy it. Uh, shout out to everyone who was at the tailgate today. Um, oh, thanks. Also, Yaya. Got to go to his first NFL game oh, today. Wow. Was stoked yes. for him. He got to see a, a dub. Uh, and, and really thank you to everyone who came out and supported us all season. Absolutely. Um, whether you came to the bar for an away game or you came to the tailgate or you were just in the comments or you you became a diehard or you bought some merch, like whatever. It means so much. Uh, and more than anything, like those of you who send us nice messages in the DMs or uh, you know, in the mentions on Twitter or you see us in person and, and tell us how much you enjoy the show. It means the absolute world. It, it makes this so much fun, even when the Broncos suck, as they have for the entirety of the existence of this podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, so thank you guys so much. One day, one day we're going to get to enjoy a fun ride through a season together. And it'll be all the more special because we'll remember what it was like 
uh, down here in the gutter. Ryan, you got to stop saying that because people are going to say, well, we need to shut you guys down True. because maybe that's what will make the Broncos good. Yeah, to be fair, <laughs> first year of BSN, the Broncos won the Super Bowl. There we so go. So it's not a company okay. curse. Okay. It could be me and you it's, being on the pod oh, together. Uh oh, oh, no, let's not start that. No, no, no. Well, rewind a little bit. But as Ryan said, thank you all so much. It means a ton, and it's really crazy and cool. As one season wraps up, I feel like five hours ago, another one started. And to have all you on this journey with us is just going to be awesome. Yeah, there was a lot of fun. In its, in its own way. Your first, se- <laughs> your first season covering that NFL, that's all you had to say. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, it was a lot of fun. It also could be a lot better, and I'm very excited for the off season because they're 0-0 zero and zero starting tomorrow, yep. and the possibilities are endless, and we get to talk about all the fun things they can do. We get to spend more time on things that aren't football-related, hopefully at some point once they finish up the coaching search. I personally am excited to for the nonsense <coughs> portion of the off season. Know, me too. Which we're still a ways away from, but we'll get there. And uh, yeah, I think this week in particular is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm excited to draft random shit against you guys. I know so <laughs> many drafts, so, so many drafts. So close. We're five away from 200. Five away from 200. Oh, four, four away, away from 200. Oh, no. as we're here. Should we count down as we count down <laughs> the new year? I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna happen that four. fast. <laughs> Three, two, one. Uh, again, thank you guys so much. It, as Aki Dragon says, oh. it was a season. Uh, which it was it a season. Certainly was that. It was. Uh, we can't wait to uh, keep it with you guys in the off season. We have some exciting travel plans to share with you soon Ooh. coming up. Uh, Two so away. stay tuned. It's gonna be awesome. Appreciate you guys. Love you. We'll talk to you soon.